Good morning. We're glad that you're with us today and good evening to those of you on the other side of the world. We're looking at this whole area of being caught up together with Christ from 1 Thessalonians and we're going to be looking at chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. So being caught up together with Christ. One of the interesting things that we see as we look through Thessalonians, especially Thessalonians, there are scriptures that talk about the last days, but their focus is not so much on the events of the of the last days as it were what may be happening or not happening, but a lot of the focus of first and second Thessalonians is on the coming of the Lord, the second coming of the Lord. So we're glad that you've joined us today as we are excelling in faith and love, and as I say, our subtitle is Caught Up Together with Christ. And I like this idea of together, because we need to realize again, as we look at the body ministry around the world, we're doing things together. You know, I just got a whole shipment of books yesterday, and you're not going to read this. I didn't write this one. This one is called In the Fullness of Time. It's a, a, a novel as it were, on, on Mary, a true novel that's been researched and historically researched with the Bible and other information. And uh, it's written by a dear friend of ours, uh, Lorna Shaw. And uh, she sent me a hundred copies to give away. And so if you happen to want to read uh, 780 some odd pages, Let's see here, 787 pages. Uh, you can let me know or just come out to the mall uh, again tomorrow. We're out there for the next couple of days. So we're, so I got thinking we're doing something together, you know. Uh, the Shaws live in Ontario and uh, they sent me these books. And uh, of course, I they asked me if they could. And I said, do you have anywhere that maybe people would enjoy reading a novel? And I said, yeah. Uh, send me a hundred and some odd books. And uh, I also hope to, uh, I am sp scheduled to speak at the La Brokery Church on Mother's Day. So I hope to have some to give away there. So those of you who watch every day from La Brokery, I've got some hidden away for you for on Mother's Day you can have also. And so don't panic, okay? <laughs> but doing things together, one of the things that I thought a lot about the last little while is how the body ministry is so important and how much Paul has been teaching on the body ministry. Wow, it's amazing what God does with people all over the place if you're just out there and are being connected. You know, we're seeing seeds planted today. We're going to be sending out seeds way up north uh, amongst the um Inuit people. So pray for that. There is 22 to 2400 books going up to the to the north and uh, we will be sending them out today and going into 22 or 2300 homes in uh, uh, amongst the um, Inuit people and we're excited about that. And yesterday we sent out about eight or nine boxes and the day before we sent out about 10 boxes and they're going all over the place. And you know what? It's doing it together. You know, as people support and help and pray, it goes that way. And as it comes in and it goes that way. And, and but also doing things together is not just in the physical things, but doing things together in the spirit realm. And we need to continue to pray for our sister Anya, as she's trying to make some decisions on what they should do, the war is is really in the, her area is really uh, expanding, and we need to pray for her and for the people that she's been working with. We also need to pray for Tanya and her husband as they work with the Bible school over in the western part. We need to pray for those in, in Myanmar. There's our home city where Colwyn and I normally live. There's been quite a few bombings going on there lately in our home city. And so lots of things going on. So not only do we help each other out physically, but we need to be a body praying one for another. Uh, we also want to continue to pray, pray for Pastor Dave Reimer, still in hospital, uh, still on the very edge 
but we're praying for for the will of the Lord to be done. And uh, that's the unique thing about doing things together. We need to be uh, to really be able to do it together. We need to pray and get connected together when it comes to the will of God. So the reason why uh, when we're looking at this idea of caught up together with Christ, uh, the, maybe the question came up in the church in that about, okay, you know, we're, yeah, we've heard about the second coming of the Lord and it seems to be a little bit of time now. When's he coming back? You know, uh, even the, 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 the disciples, the, the original disciples were thinking, well, hopefully he'll come back soon to set up his kingdom. And uh, now the Thessalonian church is saying, well, you know, what, what's happened, uh, Paul, uh, some of the people have already died. What happens to them and what happens to us who live? And so Paul is going to attempt to answer this question, not giving a real deep theological answer and maybe even opening up some more questions that we might have. Now, again, as you look at any doctrine or any teaching you got to take into account all the scriptures you know both in the book of revelation and and throughout the hebrew scriptures on what it all means to be uh concerning heaven and a concerning about those who've already passed on and concerning those of us who are still alive and so when i was thinking about this okay the the key thing that i see that as you read through these scriptures is that we're caught up together you know, we're going to meet together in the skies. That's one of the things that stand out in this scripture. So let's begin to look at chapter uh, 4, uh, starting at verse 13. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant. <laughs> I like this. Paul is using some strong words. I don't want you to be ignorant, you know, about what not, what's going on or what not's going on. You need to know. And Paul is teaching them and the word of God, you know. One of the things that, that I love about, about the scriptures is that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't want us to be ignorant. He's trying to teach us and show us. The Holy Spirit's trying to teach us and show us. God the Father is trying to teach us and show us. So we don't have to be ignorant or walk in darkness. He says, brethren, he says, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So now Paul was trying to encourage them. Okay, those who've passed away, those or they sometimes call it fallen asleep. That's just another word of saying passed on, passed away, died, however you want to put it. But those who have fallen asleep. Now he's talking about the context here of the believers. And he's going to talk a little bit more about the believers and non-believers. But he's saying, I don't want you to come to the place of that you're full of sorrow and have no hope. You know, uh, we sometimes say in English, we those of us who are disciples, we're in a win-win situation. You know, uh, if we get to remain behind, we get to uh, continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if we get to go home, it's not a sad thing to go home and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why we sometimes say it's a win-win situation. And Paul is trying to say that, you know, don't sorrow like those over there who have no hope. I always, you know, one of the hardest things was for me as a pastor was to go into hospitals and that and try to help people and encourage people who do not have hope, who do not believe in Jesus Christ, who don't believe in an afterlife and all that. It It is such a sorrow because those people are burdened with all the the baggage and things of the past and they got nowhere to drop it nowhere to deal with it and now their loved one is either sick or has just died and you know it is it is sorrow upon sorrow when they, when people don't have the opportunity to realize that they can have a hope in the future and the future of having eternal life. And so Paul was saying, you know, hope in the Lord. If you're believers, this is where the key is. If we're really true believers in Christ, and I should say really true believers in Christ, we have a hope. You know, people thought, you know, when Irene died, you know, 
Yes, I was devastated. I was, you know, missing her deeply. But on the other hand, it didn't stop the ministry because my hope was in believing that there was a heaven and that she was now there perfectly whole and perfectly healthy and perfectly strong. And I thank God for that. And that's where my hope is, you know. Oh, sure, you like to have some things change. Maybe you like to have some things different. But our hope is not in the things of this world. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why what Paul says, concerning those who have fallen asleep, least your sorrow as others who have no hope. But we have a hope. Amen. He goes on. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now, this is key, okay? If we have a hope, and then the second thing, we, we believe in heaven. This, the, the key here about be believing is that we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Now, the uniqueness about that is, that becomes what Paul says as an illustration. Do you all know that, that Jesus died? Yeah, we heard about it, Paul. You know, they would say to Paul, yeah, we heard about it, that he died on a cross. And that. But do you also remember that he rose from the grave? Yeah, well, we heard that too. And that's the good news of the gospel. Well, Paul is now using that example as the same hope we have. Yes, you will die physically, but arise again spiritually in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's trying to show us. Just like Christ died and rose again, so shall we. And so for if we believe, and, and it's interesting, <laughs> that little word if, if we believe. And that's key to a lot of things. Do we really believe? You know, not talk about belief or think about belief, but live out belief. You know, that we really believe that Jesus has died on the cross, has rose from the grave, is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and soon and very soon will come back again to gather up his own. I mean, that's what Paul is going to talk about. So the, the first point in verse 13 is, do we hope in the Lord? The second point, do we believe in the Lord? Do we believe that God will bring with him? Because notice what it goes on. To believe that it rose again. Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. God, or the triune God, is going to bring with him those who are asleep, or have fallen asleep, or have passed away. And he's going to go on to explain it. I know this is a little bit tricky, this particular passage of Scripture, because it seems to lean one way a little bit and seems to lean another way a little bit. But let's just get the, the focus is on our hope yet to come. That's the focus. And we're going to see it's something we get the joy of doing together. Because it goes on in verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. So now, the word of the Lord. So we have the hope in the Lord, to believe in the Lord, and the word of the Lord. We say to you in the word of the Lord. We say to you as a spokesperson concerning the word of the Lord and also the Hebrew scriptures concerning. Remember, back then, there was a lot of struggle between the Sadducees and Pharisees. The Pharisees believed in their afterlife. They believed that there was death after life, and the Sadducees didn't. And that's why we jokingly say around Bible schools, or remember how you remember the different two Pharisees, well, they were believing in afterlife and the Sadducees, it was sad, you see, because they didn't believe that there was eternal life. And, and if you look at the scriptures, when Jesus was talking to these two groups, there would be lots that was going on. And, 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 and because of this communication between the Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus, you know, his teaching leaned, leaned toward the Pharisees in the sense there was an afterlife. And the same thing happened with Paul. You know, sometimes they would come after uh, Paul and want to beat him and stone him and imprison him because he believed in an afterlife. And that's the key. Do we believe that the word teaches us that there is an afterlife? 
that we just don't, you know, die now and poof, we become dust and there is no more. And a lot of people believe that way. They believe that this is all that there is and that the journey will be over and and whatever may be will may, may, may be afterwards. So that's sad. There's no hope in that. And so, but there's a lot of, or you get these, these religions like Buddhism, their hope is, is that they, they go, you know, they die and they go around one more time. They die and they go around one more time. They die and they go around one more time. And then after they've gone around 30 or more times and come back as everything from people to women, to bugs, to animals, whatever, as they go around this uh, reincarnation over and over again that eventually when they re get to the place of uh, um, hmm? <laughs> Nirvana uh, hmm? <laughs> we're trying to pronounce it right here you know you can tell I'm not that good in English sometimes but anyway and then after they get there it's poof and it's all over well what kind of hope is that you know, our hope is is in Jesus Christ and uh, that he gives us according to his word. So he goes on here coming and says, remain until, goes again, verse 15, let's read. For this is, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, Lord, that we are alive and remain until coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So. You know, at the coming of the Lord, we got those who have already passed away and those who are already yet to come, okay, or have not yet died. And Paul is trying to say, okay, this is how it's going to come together. This is why we've titled that we're going to be caught up together. Because look as we go on in the verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. So the Lord has gone up. Everybody knew about the, how he... Uh, um, ascended to heaven just you know, many days before the the whole area of the um, outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the day of Pentecost and uh, how he was the first fruits of that which was yet to come. He says, but now for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. And notice how <laughs> it's not just, you know, people wondering, are we going to know or not know it, when the Lord comes back? Well, here, it's quite it's quite a noisy situation that takes place because it says here, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. He's going to shout, you know, so that we would look up with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And so those who are waiting to come into the presence of God, they shall rise first. But... <laughs> The interesting thing is he's coming back with a shout. There is going to be a, a, a almost like a thunderous shout of the coming of the Lord. And not only is he doing that, but he's going to have a voice of the archangel where that is going to be all over the place. It is going to be loud. And then, then there is an interesting little thing that's added on here and that it comes forth as the trumpet of God. And if you look in the book of Revelation, this idea of the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time will be no more. And so Paul, you know, is giving us a prophetic word about what is yet to come. And I think this is what's more important than than all these other teachings concerning the end times. <laughs> They're all important. But the most important thing about the end times is Jesus come back. Just make it simple. Jesus is coming back. And are you ready? Do you have the hope and belief in the Lord that, and the word of God that he's coming back? And do you believe that there will be a time when there is a great shout, a great voice of the archangel and that it will be trumpeted first and that the dead in Christ shall rise? What a day that will be. And as the thing is that Jesus is returning back. It's not something hidden. It's going to be at the fullness of time of the Godhead. That's why we don't know the times or the season when it's all going to take place. What events will happen or not happen. We got some inkling of these things. But the thing that we're really going to be able to understand is when we hear the shouting of the Lord. 
and we hear the archangels, you know, proclaiming, and we hear the trumpet of God. Uh, you know, this, this little passage right here, you know what it reminds me of? Is Joshua. You know, where they were, there was, there was six days of quietness, of quietness. Can you imagine the soldiers? <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, you guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to attack this, this really big walled city, but what, the way we're going to do it. I mean, these guys have been chomping at the bit to go to the war. They, I mean, they were on the other side of the river. Now they come over and, okay, let's get this done. Let's get into the promised land. Let's start conquering. And Joshua says to him, the way we're going to do this is what God said to me. We're just going to walk around here for six days and i want you need to keep quiet no joking no laughing no make any noise just walk and then on the seventh day he said now blow the trumpets now shout now all these things and you know what this reminds me of that a little bit that you know we might think that nothing's happening there's a quietness and there is People are still marching around, still doing their thing, both, both non-Christians and Christians. But to realize that there is a day coming when God is going to come and he's going to come with a shout from heaven. Where he will shout, the angels will shout, and the trumpet of God will blast. And what a day that will be. Isn't that amazing? And so I get, I get these two little things I'm thinking about. Yeah, because at that time, the walls of Jericho fell, except for that one part <laughs> where, um, you know, they were spared. The harlot was spared. You know, it's just amazing how how scripture kind of gives us pictures of different things. But then he goes on and he says in verse 17, as he continues about being caught up together, notice why I came up with this title. Because it says in verse 17, then we who are alive, I hope that you're alive, you're alive in Jesus Christ. The we who are alive and remained, we're still here, shall be caught up together. There's going to be a wonderful time when we come together. Can you imagine? We're coming together with the saints who are coming with the Lord. We're coming together. Those who have, have recently died will be raised up. We're coming together with the archangels. We're coming together with Jesus Christ and the body of believers. I mean, there is a mass of coming together that's going to take place. What? Man, that's, can you imagine what that is? A lot of you wanted to learn how to fly. Well, you're going to be taken up into the clouds. <laughs> What a day that will be, won't it? Because, you know, gravity isn't going to have any hold on you anymore. Because he says, and they shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Wow. I don't know if you've ever meditated on this or not ever thought about this, but this is going to be an amazing day. And that's why Paul says, don't be like those who sorrow and have no hope. You know, just believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his word, because the Lord is coming back again. And when he comes back again, he's going to take those who are his, if the child of his, he's going to take them up together with him. Ooh, ooh. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I'm going to pick on Sheila. Can you imagine, Sheila? <laughs> you're up in a cloud looking down and you're surrounded by angels. You're surrounded. The presence of Jesus Christ is there. There is trumpets blasting. The trumpet of the Lord is blasting. The, the angels are shouting and Jesus is calling out and you're and the saints are all around us and we're all in the midst of them. Wow. I don't know if you ever thought about that picture, but that's going to be quite the day. <laughs> That's not where things are going to be hidden. That's where everything is going to be seen. Wow, what a day. And so we're all up in the clouds. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. We get to fly around. <laughs> we get to be in the, the presence of God. Because sometimes we think of, of being in the presence of God when we go into heaven. That yes, that's in the presence of God. But before we get to heaven, according to this scripture, we're also going to be in the presence of God. If, you know, as we are brought together with him in, in the clouds. Is that what it's saying? You are, sorry, as we go on here, he says here, 
Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Look what Paul was saying. You know, he's trying to give hope to the church. A lot of devastating things that are going on back at the end of the church. And you know what? There's a lot of devastating, persecuting, all kinds of challenges going on to the church around the world. And Paul knew that. And Paul shares this word by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to know that too. There's a lot of devastating things going on. But our hope is not on the things of this earth. Our hope is not built on the things that we possess. Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his salvation. And our hope is built on that soon and very soon we're going to see our king. And not only that, that we're going to be taken up into the clouds with him. And I love this last little line he puts here. And we will always, always, always will be with him. Isn't that amazing? I guess that's what eternal life is all about. That's what eternal life is all about. You know, we get so heavily focused on how we live here on earth and what we have or don't have here on earth. And, you know, I'm looking forward. You know, I'm getting in that age now where the aches and pains and everything of the older life is beginning to come upon the body. But praise God, that day will come to an end. And we will be in the presence of the Lord where there's no more pain and suffering. There's going to be great rejoicing. The angels are going to be calling out. Jesus is going to be calling out. The trumpet of God will be sounding. There is going to be a glorious time. And we'll be together forever. Think about that. You know, can you imagine the people that don't have a hope in Jesus Christ? They've got nothing to look forward to. You know, if you would just, if we would just focus on these verses for a few minutes, you know, you would walk around the mall today or wherever you go, just beaming, smiling, grinning like crazy. And people would walk up to you, what's with me, with you? You could say to them, I got a hope. I got a hope in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has told me that soon and very soon, we're going to be taken up with him in the clouds. I'm going to get an opportunity to look at this old earth from a, a heavenly point of view where I can look back down. And my Lord is, is not going to sneak in the back door. He is going to shout. He is going to be have like a voice of the archangels and the trump of God is going to be blasted. And wow. That's just the beginning. And then he goes on and, and you and you could be grinning from ear to ear because you could be saying to the people, and we will always will be with him. We will always be with him. We will always be with our Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally Paul says this. <laughs> it just I mean He's trying to he's trying to urge the church. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I know there is all, you know, stuff going on in Ukraine and stuff going on in Myanmar and other countries that are around the world. Terrible things are going on. And it's hard. But he said, be focused on the hope that you have in Christ. And then he ends up with this verse 18 by saying this. Therefore, when you sum it all up, what I've just taught you what I've showed you, therefore, what does he say? Comfort one another. And the word comfort in the in the Greek often is used as the same as uh, same word that uses as the word encourage. He's saying, go out and encourage one another. You know, I just want to, every one of you who are waving in that today, I want to encourage you. You have a hope above and beyond all hope. You've got a hope in Jesus Christ that is eternal. And Paul was saying, hey, start talking to one another about this. Start talking about to one another about your hope in the Lord. And that by believing in him and his word that he is coming back and he will descend upon the earth. And that those of us who are here will be taken up. Those of us who are believers will be taken up with him in the clouds. And that we will always be with him. And that we need to go around and just keep encouraging or comforting one another with this. 
what Paul is saying, you need some spiritual medicine, here it is. Take some time to reflect on this. Take some time to think about this. Why? Because it's really going to comfort you and encourage you. Sometimes we can get, I, I mean, I'm the same way, watching the stuff, the news on TV, what's happening in Ukraine and what's happening around the world, what's happening in our own country. All these things, they can discourage you. And, and, the, and the thousands of people that die every day, they can discourage you. But Paul says, don't get your eyes on that church. Get your eyes on the hope of we have in our Lord Jesus Christ that soon and very soon we're going to be taken up. We're going to be taken up. Can that make you shout? Can that make you sing today? Can that make you praise the Lord and, and, and thank God? And to know that this is all going to happen and it's going to happen soon. And Paul is saying, can you take this and just encourage one another with this? This is the true hope. This is what it's all about. It's not here on earth. It's what we're going to do with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. And so as he says in verse 18, Therefore comfort one another with these words. Speak to one another with these words. And so I want to close today by just saying to you, think about this for a few minutes, that soon, you're going to be caught up together with Christ. And what a day that will be. What a time of rejoicing that will be. I don't think any of us at that point are going to be able to keep quiet. I think we're all going to be praising God and shouting hallelujah because our God reigns. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what Paul is trying to get us to focus on. Not to focus on all the hopelessness that goes on. And even the hopelessness that may even show up in the church. Lord, people discouraged and people, you know, wanting to give up and people wanting to walk away. But Father, our hope is not in that. Our hope is in you, Jesus, because you showed us through your death and resurrection that there is life after death, both physically and spiritually. And Lord, we thank you for... Yeah, the place that we can come into the presence of you and know that soon and very soon we're going to meet with you in the clouds and that we're going to meet together and there's going to be a great time of celebration and thanksgiving even at that moment. And Lord, that we can just take that which Paul is, is sharing with us and maybe today instead of looking so sad, we could walk around beaming with the glory of the Lord, the presence of Jesus in our hearts and in our faces and in our continents. Why? Because whatever happens today, we have hope. Whatever may go on, Paul says, just encourage one another because we got this moment. We got this time coming up soon where we're going to meet with you, with all the saints, with all the angels, and Lord, what a day that will be. So Lord, just encourage us today with these words as Paul said we are to do one to another. And Lord, may you be glorified in all that we've done and will do this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow. God bless you. What a living hope we have. Amen. And I pray that, that we're going to, even those loved ones that have gone before us, and even all those things that are happening around the world, we're to go out and tell others and encourage others, one another. Encourage one another. Maybe call someone up today and encourage them in the hope of the coming of the Lord. And trust that the Lord will just change our heart and our mind and our continents that just in those thoughts alone, we're going to be full of the fullness of Jesus Christ this day. The fullness of his joy. Count it all joy. Oh, what a day. Amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on and praying. As I say, we're going and shipping out a whole lot of books today. And if you're interested in this book in the fullness of time, we've got that too. And then tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're back out of the mall again, handing out books, handing out seeds. Keep praying about that. 
thousands of seeds in the have gone out now in the last week thousands of them as we especially when we ship today we're going to ship more today thousands have been going out across canada down in the united states around the world you know up north and into our little area of steinbach and surrounding area seeds are being planted praise god for that so we love you keep on keeping on and lord willing well hope to see you tomorrow but if we don't physically see you tomorrow and the lord jesus christ comes back between now and tomorrow i'll see you again <laughs> <laughs> because we'll be taken up in the clouds, rejoicing together. Amen. Oh, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you again. Bye-bye for now.